And welcome to everybody. And thank you for joining us on this uh, day of action where we're going to learn everything you need to know about the National Infrastructure Bank proposal. And uh, what I'd like to do in my little uh, summary talk, especially for those of you who have not uh, seen our presentation on how the bank works, is to explain how this National Infrastructure Bank works and why, as Carolyn says, it's an ideal platform for financing everything without any need to go to Congress every year to ask for money. Uh, the, the bank is embodied in a piece of legislation in the House of Representatives, H.R. 3339, which would create a $5 trillion public bank to lend for infrastructure projects all across the country. And the reason we need such a bank is we simply are not able to finance infrastructure in the United States or any other country, as a matter of fact, either through the federal budget, through state and local budgets. The proof of the pudding is that our, fin our financing uh, investments have fallen way off from 4% of GDP in the 1960s down to 2.4% today. And even though we've had a, an infrastructure bill passed uh, through the budget for uh, to spend money from the budget, it's not going to be large enough as I'll show you in just a moment. So this idea of a public bank to finance infrastructure is not a new idea. We've had four really large banks in our nation's past uh, after the American Revolutionary War, around the War of 1812, a set of banks under Lincoln, and then the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, uh, which helped us to get out of the Great Depression and win World War II. And Stephen Fenberg, in just a minute, is going to explain a lot more uh, about the details about that, how that bank worked. So this fifth proposal for a national infrastructure bank is modeled on the earlier four. Instead of going to the budget and asking for money to get this bank started, instead we go to the private sector, who are holding US treasuries for long-term savings purposes and ask them whether they like to sell in about $500 billion worth, slowly over time as the size of the bank builds up in exchange for an equivalent of preferred stock in the NIB. And this preferred stock would pay these investors an extra 2% more than they're currently earning on their treasuries. And that 2% interest stream would come out of the interest earnings from the NIB's loans with plenty of money left over to meet oper other operational needs of the bank. So that fully capitalizes the bank. That's what you need to do to uh, open a bank like this. That's step one. Step two is to actually give out a loan and that loan process works exactly like a commercial bank. The NIB takes and deposits, creates money each time it gives out a loan. These loans would probably go to state and local governments, transit authorities, anybody that owns public infrastructure. And the loan terms would be very advantageous, keep financing costs down uh, around the treasury bond rate for interest charged and flexible repayment terms as well. Uh, this is the uh, what the bank would cover, excuse me, five trillion in projects, as I mentioned. Uh, where did this estimation come from? About half of it came from the American Society of Civil Engineers who in 17 categories of hard infrastructure say that's how much we need to repair our transportation systems, our water systems, and upgrade our electric power grid. In addition, we added some categories we think are really highly critical, a complete high-speed rail network all across the country, broadband everywhere, affordable housing, 7 million units are factored into our bank's financing, and large scale water projects to address drought in the Southwest where we grow about half of our nation's food. This is the same $5 trillion expressed in billions of dollars so that we can compare it to the, the bill that just passed in Congress in mid-November and was signed into law, the bipartisan infrastructure bill that will provide only $550 billion of new money. You can see that it's one-tenth too small. And what it means is that every state in the country will not be able to receive everything that it needs for roads and bridges, mass transit, falls way short on water infrastructure, not enough, for example, to replace all of those lead service lines, which is a big emphasis of our bank, nothing in here at all for high-speed rail or affordable housing. We're very glad that the administration passed this bank, this bill. We always want state and local governments to receive grant money first, although they'll have to come up with their 20% copay uh, to uh, actually uh, uh, capture this money. But we, if we're really serious about fixing infrastructure and not continuing to degrade uh, our economy, then we're going to need a national infrastructure bank to top everything up. 
So finally, uh, this is what the bank would do to the American economy. And since I'm a, a macro economist, um, I, I look at these things because they're very important for restructuring and uh, transforming our American economy. First of all, the operations of the bank will create up to 25 million new great paying jobs. The legislation requires that workers working uh, um, in, as for contractors or subcontractors must be paid Davis-Bacon wages. And of course, they'll get full benefits. A Buy America only provision for the in construction inputs means we'll be promoting American manufacturing. For example, you can envisage all those um, all the steel that will go into buildings and railroads and steel cars uh, could be made. All of that could be made in the United States. Uh, we think that this will accentuate uh, the average great growth rate of our economy, get it up to around 5% a year. That's where it was the last time we had a bank like this and increased productivity. So keep in mind, we're now able to finance everything we need without any new federal taxes or debt and without stoking inflation because this kind of investment is much more productive for the economy. So businesses will grow, workers will benefit, will reduce poverty and income inequality, which another speaker is gonna talk about, uh, rural and urban, uh, every single area in the United States will receive benefits from the bank and federal and state and local finances will improve. Thank you very much for your time.